sermon today. The title is Another Lighthouse. Hmm. Another Lighthouse. There's a phrase used in our country. I don't know if it's used in yours. You have unique sayings and phrases and idioms. But we have a phrase called the difference between night and day. Do you guys have that? You ever use that? No. I guess you don't. There's a difference between night and day. And it's a reference to, it's a wide gap. And most of us like the day better than the night. I like night to sleep. A day to get something done. I don't, especially the older I get, the more eye strain I have, the less I like driving at night, especially in Miami. So, I want us to think about that today and how we would relate to this picture. Now, it's totally different if that moon wasn't up there. Then you would be talking about really dark. I still can understand that being a farmer that he was, used to get up when I was 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 years old. All those years I'd get up at 4 in the morning to round up the milk cows and bring them in the farm and milk them. And it was so much easier finding them out in the fields when there was a full moon or half moon. A lot harder when there was a, what you call a new moon or hardly any moon there. I like the light, and I hope you do too. God hopes you like light. Because the world today is dark. Very ominous. I guess you would have to say probably murky at best. Because when you take in the last few years that we've experienced here, plus what we have to look forward to in the future, Maybe there's a new virus. Every time I turn around and listen to Dr. Fauci, he's got something new up his sleeve. And I, I laugh because sometimes in Florida we don't really have the, the problem. We started out having a lot of problems with the virus, COVID-19, but then it all kind of died out as it is now, hardly anybody has that. Even the reports that we we're getting, that are still cases are slim to none. Thankfully, I heard Junior is doing well as I talked to him, so he said it was more like a cold than it was a serious virus. But the world tells us whether we want to listen or not that we have to be worried about pessimists. Bible even talks about it. And whether that's a virus or not, still puts a little darkness in our lives about wars. There's a war going on right now, in case you haven't watched TV or news, between Russia and the Ukraine. But before that, there's war going on in Syria. There was war going on in Afghanistan. War in so many places. When one ends, another one is already going or about to start. And it is very dark. In a time of war. In America, we have to worry about not just inflation, but hyperinflation. Things are spending is out of control by our government, by various entities. Price of oil, price of food, necessities gone up so much. Matter of fact, Miami kind of leads the way in the whole nation on housing costs because rent has gone up from 50 to 70 percent just in the last few months. I ran across someone in Deerfield Beach long ago that had a friend that was renting an apartment. Not a big one, renting an apartment for $2,000 a month, U.S. His landlord came and said, next month is going to be 
He said, I can't pay that. Then I'll take that as your notice. Because I got people lined up to take it. Scary when you see things like that that just happen seemingly overnight. The racial and civil strife and conflict puts a very dark picture in the future for people that hopefully try to get along. Day after day after day of violence. Some unspeakable, unwatchable that end up on video. Not only in our country, yours also, as I was reading Google Trinidad and Tobago News, find out you're not that far from us. And I don't mean distance, I mean violence. In Florida, Leslie was talking yesterday, I mean just some hideous, heinous crimes committed. And it's almost every day. It's why I choose not to watch the news very often. Because I like to see the positive in the world instead of the negative. Because it does affect me. The world is dark. And our world, it needs light. You need light here in Trinidad and Tobago. They need light in St. Lucia, Dominica, Grenada, Jamaica. Oh, and do we ever need light in Haiti? It's amazing how more light can change so many things. Not only physically, mentally, Spiritually, darkness affects us all. And light can change so many things. The differences we talked about between a full moon and when it's dark, a new moon. Flashlight makes such a difference if you're walking around at night. Turn it off and you realize what a blessing light is. Practicality of having a light when you're working under a car. I used to have, I still have one of these. Still keep because I used from my construction day. So I can put it on my head and it gives light. Different kinds of light. Don't we need to see more of this? I use this particular one because I can plug it in. It's not on batteries. When I, in Tennessee, I have to work under our house. We have that little crawl space. I have to fix plumbing or I have to look at this or that and see some critter crawl under the house and pour some insulation out in the winter. I use this my house in Florida, when I crawl up into the attic, our attic is kind of dark. I have to put some vents up when I go back. I'm not looking forward to that. But I'll carry this and put it on my head or wrap it around my hand so that I've got a light as I'm working and it helps. But not just this type of light, but the light we get every day from God. I don't know about you, but rainy and cloudy days and days on end and day after day after day, because that's one thing that I faced in Tennessee when we lived there for all those years. We would have a December or a January that would hit us, and it would be cloudy, and cool, sometimes cold, for a month at a time. We would not see the sun for an entire month. You guys ever have anything like that? No, you've never. I, I've never had it in Florida. 
we may have a day or two of rain and even a week if they rain, but the sun's coming out. That's why he's called Sunshine State. But I remember because working construction, we even had guys come in and say, man, today was the first day in over a month. We had sunlight. It does affect you. There's even, um, they call it disease. You can suffer from if you don't get enough sunlight. My mother claims she has that. No, she does. She claims she does. But light changes everything. And God knew that. Why? He created it. That's how he knows it. And light has always been needed, even on these islands. I found it interesting that in Trinidad, I've only seen one, but I understand you have five lighthouses. Did you guys know that? How I many of you seen? I've only seen one, the big red one. Anybody seen one of the others? I don't think that's yours, but that's a lighthouse. But it's interesting that so many people had to use lighthouses. But one is supposed to be in, how do you pronounce it? Galera? There's a lighthouse there. Have anybody ever seen it? You've seen it. Okay. And there's, of course, the big one, Port of Spain. Is five enough? Wait a minute. Roxanne said, you've seen one? Oh, okay. But have you ever seen, you've, so people have seen lighthouses. I, I, we have one in, well, Lighthouse Point is what it's called. It's the next town down from. Deerfield Beach where I live, and they have a lighthouse there. It's been there for over 120 years. It's not real big, not like some of them, but it's very skinny, but it's tall, about, about 100 feet, or 10 feet, and you can actually take a tour and go up in it, which just has to be two people at a time. It's not real big. Well, we saw it, my wife and I, walking on the beach, as we do sometimes, down walk a mile or two on the beach. And we said, hey, that lighthouse is right on the beach down at Lighthouse Point. Why don't we walk there? It didn't move very far. We need to walk a mile or two miles anyway. Well, we found out it wasn't two miles. It was four and a half miles each way. And we had no car to get back. So we had to walk nine, ten miles like that. So they can be deceptive distance. But have you ever seen, many of you have seen lighthouses, have you ever seen a non-stationary lighthouse? A lighthouse that moves. Well, that's what I want to talk about today. Because Christ was the first non-stationary lighthouse. Yes? Jesus Christ was the first non-stationary lighthouse. A lighthouse put into service to shine light in a very dark world. Christ came at the right time, came to the right place to bring hope, to bring this light and a vision of an even brighter day. A brighter time called the millennium to the world, except his audience didn't really understand it or many times didn't want to believe it. He used only two words that have echoed through the ages to help those who want to see the light of a new day, the dawning of a new day. A thousand year period of restoration of nothing but light and of darkness. He said these two words. Follow me. Follow me. If you 
want that time? You want that light? Follow me. John 8, verse 12. From the New Living Translation. John 8, verse 12 says, I, what did Christ say? What did that lighthouse say? I am the light of the world. Why should we look to Him? You shouldn't if you don't want light. If you want darkness, you prefer darkness with the light. But it's interesting here because Christ was telling this. But he was just, it was really a retelling for him. And it was a, for him, we saw a birth of a human lighthouse. Because that's what he became. But I wonder how many times did he reflect back and be in that light on Genesis 1 where it says, let there be light. He said it. These were his words. He said, let there be light. And what happened? There was light. And Scripture tells us it was very good. It was good. So, the Word spoke a word and there was light. That's how powerful the Word was. The Word spoke a word. <laughs> and there was light. Four words. A 4,000 year old story was being retold 2,000 years ago. And not just 2,000 years ago. But there was a lighthouse that took shape 1,994 years ago. The first of many so-called lighthouses. Because 1,994 years ago in 28 A.C., A spiritual light was cast. A physical light was seen in the form of a man. And this man, this light, penetrated into the very souls of men, women, and even children. The first marine lighthouse was put into Existence, I, you might want to say, put into commission. Because when we had problems at the lighthouse near us, uh, the lights had gone out, something happened, and so they took the lighthouse out of commission. And since everyone had to wait, they said, well, we'll let you know when we put it into commission, which means we put it back into working. Order. Christ came and did an incredible thing. He showed a light that has never been as bright since. But there's still been a light. The definition according to Oxford Dictionary for Lighthouse is a structure containing a beacon light to warn or guide ships at sea. Christ came that He was that beacon light. We have it in the pages of our Bible. We have the examples. We have the written testimony four different men. They saw that light. Saw that lighthouse. And attested to the fact that they were going to follow that light. We need to be led and guided. And even warned. How many of us haven't taken warning from this? From Christ's very words. The first documented lighthouse. Anybody know what it was? How long ago it was? I mean, 
mean, because lighthouses were used for ships to come in and they would see it so they would know where to go as a guide, but it's also a warning of how close they may be to the shore. I look this up, and the first documented lighthouse was Pharos of Alexandria, Egypt. The very first lighthouse. This lighthouse, the depiction of it here, was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. They built this lighthouse, this Pharos lighthouse, 450 feet tall. Now that's pretty tall. At that time, imagine the structure, how the construction of it had to be. But Alexandria, at that time, because this took place 300 years before Christ, 300 BC was the very first stationary lighthouse. And there was so much shipping going in and out of Egypt at the time, in Alexandria, as the Greeks were bringing stuff in, there was the libraries, there was this, all this learning that was being done at that time, preserved and saved, but here was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world, and everybody, as the writers and historians would all say, it was just something to see. At night, you can see it from miles away. The oldest existing lighthouse today is in La Corna, Spain. I had an uncle who lived in Spain for about six years. And he had referenced this side of the island that it was on. And this lighthouse was built in 20 BC, and it still exists today. I think I have a picture. That, that lighthouse in Spain still exists today. That's over 2,000 years ago. Would we? Will we last that long? Not physically. And most lighthouses do not last that long. As a matter of fact, there's a Roman lighthouse in, on the cliffs of Dover. In England, that was built about 10 years after Christ was killed. Lighthouses were very important to the people a long time ago, as they are even today. Now, the one thing about it, today, almost all boats and ships even I have one I carry sometimes. They have GPS, right? What does GPS stand for? Global Positioning System. Global Positioning Systems. Because we get my feedback from my, well, you even have it on your phones now. We have people on the phones. They feed us from a satellite. But 2,000 years ago, they didn't have GPS systems. 20 years ago, how, when did those come in? I remember buying one for my car way back, and it's so different now, it's smaller. But it is unique because today's most powerful optics in lighthouses, you can see out on the ocean, you can see that light from 25 miles away. That's how bright that light is. Which helps ships. But what about a non-stationary? As I talked about, Jesus Christ was a non-stationary lighthouse. Well, he's gone. So are all the disciples. The ones that lived at his time.
But God has continued to have non-stationary lighthouses. And I'm looking at them in this room. We are to shine a light. See, we have to be GPS. God's positioning system. We are here because God put us here and we are here to what? Shine the light of Christ in us. We are called to be lights and good lights. Sometimes we may not want to be seen. But we are seen. He intends for us to be seen. We are His lighthouse. And it's something we should hopefully want to be. But not all lights are good lights. In 1999, I kept the Feast of Tabernacles on the island of Barbados. And we kept it at a place, there was a hotel there, but there was an original castle. It was called Sam Lord's Castle. Anybody ever heard of Sam Lord's Castle? And some of you have been there. I know you were near there. But I stayed and had dinner and I stayed in the hotel that's been torn down now. But the castle that he once lived in, this rich man, was right near the cliffs in Barbados right near the ocean. And Sam Lord was a very wealthy man. That's how he's able to build a castle. But they said, when I was there, and went through this little room and told all about Sam Lord and Sam Lord's castle, that Sam Lord didn't always have a lot of money. But a lot of ships, being Barbados, was a very popular marketing and shipping area, but they, as they do even now, they can tend to at night have a lot of fog, very hard to see sometimes. And so ships would look for lighthouses so they could know that they were going the right direction, especially after storms. So Sam Lord decided where he was staying at the time there were a lot of caves, a lot of rocks. Ships did not want to go there because they would hit the reef or then they would hit some of the rocks that would tear their, their ships apart. And that was his plan. So Sam Lord started making lights of fire and he would actually move the lights because he would see ships out there. And he would move his lights, his fire, he would move them towards the shore. And then as the ship started getting closer, he moved it back and back and back till the ships then crashed into the reef, crashed into the rocks. To which time his men would get in these boats and go rob the ships and put all the stuff in the caves. I actually walked through some of the caves that they had under that area at the time. And he became very wealthy. But it was a dangerous light. Brethren, I must tell you, we have to be aware of dangerous lights. Lights that can affect us. Because following the right light is crucial to how we live and our destiny. Just because someone may profess to be religious, follower of Christ, may have some type of light you see on the outside, then it's not always a good light. I go back to a story. My parents started attending the Church of God when I was 15 years old. It was a big church. Six, seven hundred people. And so my parents said, oh, now these are the young people you need to hang with. So I did. But I met a young man, he was a year or two older than I was, had a car, 
name was Kevin. And Kevin was a very generous person. Came to church every week. His parents were deacon and deaconess. But Kevin didn't always say the right things that you would think. But he was, he was a giver. He was always giving me gifts. Always giving girls in the church gifts, other people gifts. Back then it was eight track players. So that's how old I am. Or there would be other things he gave. And we all wondered, wow, he doesn't have that good of a job, but he's just a giving person. Well, come to find out that's Kevin, supposed to light in the church, was robbing houses during the day instead of going to his job. And he would do things at night, he would case houses out, find out if somebody was there, and if not, he would go in and take this stuff. He didn't sell out of it, he just gave it silly, but that was him. And he even had a car that he showed me one time uh, he could put a toggle switch on the inside so he could turn the back lights out of the car. So you couldn't see his license plate, couldn't see anything. He said, that's in case somebody chases me. Well, I think it was in the fall of the year, I got a call and he had been arrested and put in jail. And so all of us who had been given gifts were all told to bring our gifts all the way to the police station. I didn't realize how much was there, but it was would have filled the stage. He got sent up. Spent time in prison. About 18 months. And when he got out, he stayed straight for a couple of years. Didn't come back to church. Too embarrassed about that. But then I thought, well, maybe he straightened out his life. And then he made headlines on the news because the Saturn plant had just opened and he was working on a maintenance crew that came in and cleaned it up and he stole the plans. He got into one of the rooms and stole the plans from a GM car. This time, he got 10 years in prison. He died just a few years after he got out. But I thought, my parents thought, hey, he said, boy, he's a good kid, he's got all this. No. It, what matters is what's inside. You can look good on the outside. And that's what Christ wants us to be. Lights that are from the inside out. And that's what He asked us to be. For the time I have left this morning, I'd like to go to a certain book in the Bible. Because... The Apostle John was inspired to inspire us with his lighthouse verses because he was a follower of Christ. And he wanted us to see just how important light was and he did it more than any other writer as we already saw in John 8 as he quoted Christ. But let's go. Let's go to the book of John. I'll be reading from the New Living Translation. New Living Translations. John 1, verse 4, from the New Living Translation. The Word gave life to everything that was created, and His life brought light to everyone. If we were there, we had the chance. He would have brought light to us. But He brought light to a lot of people, didn't He? How many showed up? 50 days after his death. Around 50 days. 120. Out of all the thousands. Thankfully, 3,000 came, 5,000 came late. 
But verse 5, which you don't have there, it said, the light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish it. Isn't that great to have a lighthouse? To be a lighthouse, and he says that this light shines in the darkness and darkness can never put us out. We are to be continuing to be that light. He's gone, but we continue through the ages. There are His lights. Verse 6 says, God sent a man, John the Baptist, to tell about the light so that everyone might believe because of his testimony. John himself was not the light. He was simply a witness to tell about the what light. That's what we're to do. It's not about us shining and saying, like, ah, look at me. No, it's about His light, just like John the Baptist did. Verse 9 says, the, the one who is a true light, who gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. This was exciting. That's what John the Baptist was teaching. That there's a great light coming. Go over to John 3. Let's go a couple of chapters over. John 3 and verse 19. John 3 and verse 19. It says, And the judgment is based on this fact. God's light came into the world. But people loved darkness more than light. For their actions were evil. We have that today. So should we just give up and say, well, it was a dark world? No. We are that light. We are that those lighthouses that need to shine. For those looking, sailors just stayed out in the water. They weren't looking for lights. But as those who were looking for them, looking for some safe harbor, that's what lighthouses are for. That's what we need to be for. Be there for. Verse 20. All who do evil hate the light and refuse to go near it for fear their sins will be exposed. Oh, that is so right. But those who do what is right come to the light so others can see that they are doing what God wants. That's the purpose of us being lighthouses. Moving lighthouses. Making a difference. Let's go over to another one John gave us. John 9. John 9. Verse 4. John 9 verse 4. New Living Translation. We must quickly carry out the task assigned us by the one who sent us. The night is coming and no one can work. And while I am here in the world, I am the light of the world. He said it many times, didn't he? John wanted to make sure we understood Christ is that light. We need to carry on with that light. That light has to be in us. Do we want it? How important was it? Well, let's go over to John 12. John 12. This is just the last week of his life. And this is what he wanted to get across. John 12, verse 35. John 12, verse 35. He said, My light will shine for you just a little longer. So he knew he was about to die. Walk in the light while you can, so the darkness will not overtake you. Those who walk in the darkness cannot see where they are going. Put your trust in the, what's it say? Light. Light. Put your trust in the light while there is still time. Brethren, we have time. The people in Ukraine, the people we've worked with in this church from the Ukraine, they're not, they're not able to do any work. They're scrambling to survive. The 
orphanage that we work with over there. And they've had to turn it in just whatever they can and try to save those little children. It's dark. And there's a time, as the Bible predicts, that this whole world will be dark. We have to do what He wants us to do while it is still light. That's what He's telling. He's telling the disciples of it. He said, put your trust in the light while there is still time. Then you will become children of light. Isn't that fulfilling our destiny? Is to be the light. You're a light in your house. You're a light on your street. You're a light in your town. You're a light on this island. Unless you say, no, I prefer darkness. Is that what you want? Because God will let you be dark. He lets us choose. Same way with that and me. He let them choose. They chose to follow darkness. So many in the world choose to follow darkness. But not everyone. That is where we come into play. We need to be that light. Let's go down with me to verse 46. 46. I have come as light to shine in this dark world. That is why knowing the life of Christ, knowing Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, knowing those Gospels, knowing what He says, His words, that's why it's so important to read those words. He brought light to this dark world, and we are to continue to bring light to this dark world. Even if it's only a little light like this, it's enough for some people to find their way. That's why what we're planning to do, kicking off next Friday, we're going to try to shine a bigger light, a brighter light, a beacon in Trinidad, Tobago, and eventually go across the whole Caribbean. For those who are looking for the light, that is why we're doing it. We're not doing it to say, oh, how we can pack a room, oh, how we can do this or that has to be done. So let's go back to 46. I have come as a light to shine in this dark world so that all who put their trust in me will no longer remain in the dark. Can we? Will we put our trust? Will we be able to stay there? I hope so. I hope so. Jesus Christ left a legacy of light. A lighthouse to shine in every generation. Is that what we need? That's what we're to do. There were lights before me. There were lights a hundred years ago. Now we have an opportunity to shine a little brighter because of the blessings God has given us the technology even in this time. Matthew 5. Matthew 5 verse 14 through 16 the New King James Version. His Christ gave this on the Sermon on the Mount. And He all of a sudden turned it to the people who were listening and said, you are the light of the world. A city set upon a hill cannot be hidden. And then he talks about a lamp and a light. You don't, you don't, you put it on a stand, you don't cover it with a basket. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father. An incredible statement. So he was knowing he only had so long to be a lighthouse here. But He's saying his followers would be continue to be those lighthouses. As you know, the moon has no light. We go out and look at the moon. 
doesn't have any light on itself. The only light it reflects is that of the sun. Rather than that is us. Without God in us, without the Holy Spirit in us, we really don't have a light. Oh, it may be a different kind of light. But it's not the light of the Son of God in us. And that is what we need to be able to do. We need to be able to have. Brethren, it takes vision to be able to be used by God. To want to be a lighthouse. Because sometimes you're going like, I don't really, I'm going through some tough times. I don't really want to be a lighthouse. I'm sure there's times that Christ didn't want to either. And He needed strength from the Father. And that is what we need to do. And that's what we have been given to do. Brethren, people need to see a light. God knows that. He's known it for a long time. A light that draws, that guides people to God. It's where they can have light in their life in this dark world. It's where they can see the future. What does God need us to be leaving this year from the spring holy days and the days of my living bread? Have we learned to be better lights? Have we learned to be a light? Have we learned to accept being a light of God that shines the light of Christ? And all those who meet us and talk to us. So what does God need? Nothing. God doesn't need anything. He needs nothing. But what does He want? He wants another lighthouse. God wants another lighthouse. And He wants it in Trinidad. Will we? Will we be this lighthouse? Will we accept it? See, you can be a lighthouse and not have a light. And you serve no purpose. Serve no purpose to guide and warn and protect. That's us. So now you know. Nothing. What does he want? Another one.